Are you unsure, overwhelmed, or just confused by the number or types of medications that you take? Do you even know if one of them or a combination of them might be bad for you? If so, you're not alone. According to a recent study by the CDC, 90% of people over the age of 65 take at least one prescription medication and around 40% take five or more. That is a lot of medications to manage. In this video, I'll give you a clear outline of exactly what to do to get on top of your medications and feel better about all of it. So let's do it. So many older people are taking multiple medications and they're not sure if they're helping them or hurting them. Trying to manage your medications can feel overwhelming and trying to figure out which is the right medication or if one of them is getting bad for you as you get older is just really hard to do. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process so you can change this. For some people, this is all you need. Tell me what to do and I'll go do it. That's great. For other people, it can be really helpful to get more in-depth explanations, hands-on examples, and even handouts for the process. If that would be helpful for you, I'm offering an online webinar in the next few weeks so that we'll do all of that and more. The link for the webinar is in the description below so you can check that out if you're interested. So let's get to the process. Step one, list your medication. When you're listing your medication, make sure that you are listing the generic or non-proprietary name, which is often different than the trade name that you're used to. For example, if you take Tylenol for your headaches, the generic or non-proprietary name is acetaminophen. Another example is Lipitor that you might take to lower your cholesterol. The generic name for that is atorvastatin. If you put down the wrong name, then the resources that you can find online and use will likely not help you. You'll miss them because it doesn't list them by those trade names. Once you have your medications listed, the next step is to check to see if they are on the list of beers criteria. This is a wonderfully useful list that was made by specialists in aging to list medications that may be potentially inappropriate as we age. It's available online. I have the link here and I'll put it in the description below. The third step is to check to see if any of your medications are anticholinergic in nature. This is a fancy way of saying that it's a certain way that medications can impact your brain and potentially contribute to signs of dementia. Here's the link to this online resource and I'll also put it in the description below. The next step is to check to make sure that your medications aren't interacting with each other in bad ways. Each medication by itself could be just fine, but some medications don't play well together. If that's the case, they can really harm you. Here's a link to an online resource for this that I think is especially useful and it's listed here and I'll also put it in the description below. Now here is an especially important step. Now look at your medications from step one through four and see, are any of your medications potentially concerning? If so, we need to make a plan. Do not stop taking them abruptly. Stopping medications quickly can be a very bad idea depending on the medication. It can be harmful for your body and in some cases even cause death. Don't do it. So step six is that we need to request a meeting with your doctor. Now, it's not just as easy as saying, oh, I'm gonna ask my doctor at my next scheduled appointment, we can talk about it then. Because for the most part, this is not a meeting where you will have time or space or the setup to do a good job and actually get your questions answered. When you are requesting a meeting with your doctor, you need to do it in a way that lets them know that you want them to get paid for the meeting, but that it also doesn't trigger a defensive reaction. We all know that having a conversation with someone never seems to go well when one side already feels defensive. Once you've asked for the meeting, the next step is to prepare for it. Make sure that you write down all of your questions and that you give space for a conversation, again, that is not you attacking your provider and saying they're doing something wrong, but collaborating with them. This is really an opportunity to be able to increase this cohesive, wonderful working arrangement that you have with your doctor. Step eight is to actually have the meeting. Have an outline so that all of your questions and concerns can be addressed. Talk about the pros and cons of the medications and alternatives. At the end, summarize what you've decided and make a plan to work together on it. Now the last step, step nine, is also quite important. 
after the meeting, sit down and think to yourself, well, how did it go? If it went well and you understand now why you're taking a medication or changes that you may make, then be sure to think about thanking your doctor. Not everybody has this experience, so it might be a call or a thank you note or some little way that you say, hey, you're doing a really great job and I appreciate it. If you did not have a good experience, maybe your provider wasn't especially open to your concerns or having a conversation about them, or it really didn't feel like they were listening or heard your concerns, you may consider getting a different provider who is able to have productive conversations like that with you. So this process can help you clarify and feel better about the medications that you do take. If you need more guidance on this step, I do have several videos on this topic. You can feel free to watch them all. Some of them have over a million views. If you want specific guidance on how to do all these steps, I'm offering an upcoming webinar just to do that. I'll explain each part in detail, go through examples and role plays so you know what it looks like, and provide handouts that you can use for each part. The link for the webinar is in the description below so you can check it out there. I really hope that this information is helpful to you all so that we can be more informed consumers and better partners in our own healthcare. If you want a heads up on medications that aren't even prescribed but are just over the counter and could be sitting in your medicine cabinet right now, feel free to check out this video where I talk about some of those. I'll see you there. Bye.